Welcome to SouthPod, the first and foremost podcast created to tell the true story of tech innovation in the American South. SouthPod is hosted by Dig South founder Stanfield Gray and produced by Dig South Tech Media, the South's tech hub. Visit digsouth.com for details and join our membership group at dignation.co. This episode of SouthPod was originally recorded on Wild Pitch Wednesday. It features Desmond Wigan Jr. of Battery Exchange. Dig Nation, and welcome back to Wild Pitch Wednesday, the virtual event where startups present to a live audience of investors, tech executives, entrepreneurs, and Dig Nation members. Dig Nation is the South's tech tribe, and it is powered by Dig South. Find out more at dignation.co. Dig South is a tech media company. We also produce Dig South Tech Summit annually in Charleston. My name is Stanfield Gray. I'm your host and the founder of Dig, of Dig South. So let's see, what do we have today on tap? Today, we are joined by Desmond Wigan, the founder of Battery Exchange. After spending two years in China obtaining his MBA in international business, Desmond co-founded Battery Exchange. Desmond has almost a decade of professional experience with expertise in business development, technology, manufacturing, and international organizational management. As the CEO of Battery Exchange, Desmond brings firsthand knowledge of how to raise capital while building a team positioned to scale. So what's Battery Exchange, you ask? Battery Exchange is an ecosystem of smart kiosks that seeks to increase connectivity between people, businesses, and communities. Battery Exchange uses its rental platform to provide on-demand portable batteries to connect people, businesses, and communities to things that matter to each entity the most. Today's episode of Wild Pitch Wednesday is brought to you by Oracle for Startups. Oracle for Startups is the launch pad to integrate and scale with Oracle technology, expertise, and global reach. Join Oracle for Startups with promo code DIG2021, that's DIG2021, to unlock up to $5,000 in additional free cloud credits and a 70% discount for two years, plus expert mentorship, migration support, technical resources, and access to Oracle's 430,000 plus customer base. If you look over in the chat today, you will see the promo code and the link to take advantage of this special offer. Now, let's introduce our esteemed guest panelists. Representing Oracle for Startups, the sponsor of our show today, we welcome Nicholas Mancini. Nick currently serves as the North American Business Development Program Manager for Oracle for Startups. Oracle for Startups offers go-to-market connectivity, cloud infrastructure discounts, technical support, mentorship, and other services to help startups grow. Our next panelist, Will McGuire, has been a startup investor and advisor since 2016. He's the founder and CEO of Crowdfund North Carolina, or Crowdfund NC, which just performed two acquisitions and combined efforts with Boone Incorporated and the Phoenix Entrepreneurial Community. Welcome to Wild Pitch Wednesday, everybody, and thanks for joining us. So without further ado, though, we're going to start the show right off the top with Desmond Wigan of Battery Exchange. The stage is yours, Desmond. Take it away, my friend. Sounds good. I'll be sharing my screen. I'm going to kill my video because I've been having a little bit of connectivity issues, and I do not want to mess it up. Hope everybody's doing well this morning. Um, All right, so greetings, Um, good morning. Um, My name is Desmond Wigan, again, CEO and co-founder of Battery Exchange. Um, Stanfield actually gave me a great, um, you know, introduction, Um, but I'm gonna take you back uh, two years ago, traveling in mainland China. Um, I'm with my co-founder and we're taking a lot of videos, we're taking pictures and one particular day, um, after a long day of being out and about, we realized that we ran into the inconvenience of having a dead cell phone. And that's when we figured we were no longer connected to the things and the people that matter to us most. Um, And, you know, we started to scratch our head and that was that light bulb moment that stated, you know, why wasn't there a more convenient way for us to charge our cell phone while we're on the go? We started to look into the the mobile market and then the market opportunity and saw that there were over 300 million cell phone users and 85% of those individuals were not consistently carrying a spare charger outside of their homes. 
then we looked at buying behavior and within the cell phone market individuals are actually keeping their cell phones three times as long because of the limited features for upgrades then individuals are you know having this cell phone that they're using for years on in and the battery is diminishing and in this ever connected world that we live in connectivity is work it's school it's entertainment safety and security and so we figured that we would do something about that this is my apologies that is the wrong deck Sorry, sorry about that. And so we built this rental platform where we provide on-demand portable batteries for cell phone users. So for us, it's an ecosystem. Um, it's an ecosystem that connects people to the world in adding this convenient way to charge their cell phones away from their homes. And then we're connecting businesses to customers. We're allowing them to supply a more convenient charging solution but also allows them to increase foot traffic and keep people at their locations more com um, comfortable and convenient at their locations. And then lastly, we're connecting communities to information and resources through our digital screens. So I wanted to take some time and just kind of talk through our products and talk about how they even work. So the way our kiosk machine model works is we place one of these models um, at businesses, and I'll kind of explain that in a later slide and users are able to rent these portable batteries on demand these portable batteries such as the one in the middle it's about 5,000 milliamps um, compatible with apple android you can charge any type of cell phone device but you can also charge iot devices tablets and some laptops as well so there's no longer a need to be tethered to an outlet or be away from your phone it's something that you have the autonomy to walk around with and travel freely then on the right we have an interactive digital screen, and this is where we allow businesses to display different features. So they can display menus, promotions, specials. They can use QR codes to drive traffic to different websites. They can display COVID or safety information. They can have safe uh, surveys to just really understanding the customer experience. And then there's the opportunity for third party advertisement as well. So that's the product itself. And then this is the mobile application component. So Consider it similar to how you can rent a, a, a bike or a scooter, depending on the different city that you're in. The way it works is step one, user downloads the mobile application. They create a profile. It's integrated with Facebook or Google. Um, then they're able to, step two, locate where there's a nearby kiosk machine. And this identifies the businesses that we have on our platform. And then step three, they're able to once before even scanning the QR code um, on the kiosk machine, they're able to see how many available batteries there are in that kiosk machine. But also when it's time for them to return it, they're able to see how many empty slots are available for them to return the portable battery. So they scan the QR code, get access to the portable battery, and then they have autonomy to keep it for up to four hours for free. And then once they finish, they just return it to any kiosk machine within our ecosystem. So they can return it to the location that they're at or the location that they're going to um, afterwards. This is a little bit of our business model. Um, we are focused in two different verticals. We have a corporate vertical and then a small business vertical. Um, these locations, they lease our kiosk machine and then there's an additional subscription for our services. The corporate vertical, you think about hospitals, airports, university, locations where patrons are spending anywhere from three to five hours at a location. And again, don't wanna be tethered um, and don't wanna be away from their devices. Then there's the small business vertical, such as restaurant halls, bars, and co-working spaces. And those spaces are looking to keep their individuals at their location longer and increase the overall experience at their venue. For us, when we lease the kiosk machines, we're looking at a 42% gross margin. And so what that means is day one, when we launch it in a location, we're already profitable on that kiosk machine. And then we get the reoccurring revenue from the subscription where the businesses are able to use our backend software to, to push whatever content they want to the digital screen. And then the maintenance aspect of the technology and product as well. This is a little bit of um, our traction. Um, 2020 was a, a big building year for us. And so 2021 is already off to a good start. 
Um, in January alone, we've been able to launch into uh, four different locations. Um, the first location was a restaurant hall, which is right uptown Charlotte, where we're headquartered and it's 7th Street Market. In the first two weeks alone, we've increased foot traffic over 50%. Um, and for the restaurant hall, January through March is a slower month. So they really love that we were still bringing individuals into those spaces. Um, they've also, we've also been, been seeing a trend of individuals looking for additional spaces to work from home and the restaurant hall uh, is because of their Wi-Fi and just how spread out they are. They've been seeing a big trend of individuals coming to those spaces. And so we in essence just offer another amenity for those individuals to stay comfortable throughout that location. We've launched in a recent uh, bar as well, right uptown. And this is where, you know, I, a lot of millennials are hanging out. They hate being at home. They want to get out and they're trying to be as, um, you know, COVID friendly as possible. But there's this 10 p.m. curfew that we have in North Carolina and individuals are actually coming to these locations a little bit earlier and spending a little bit more time. So in essence, we're offering the solution for those individuals to um, just be able to comfortably stay there until 10 p.m. and then be able to Uber back home um, and you know have a charged phone on their way back. And then lastly, we've launched into two co-working spaces, Avent and Packer Place um, co-working. And you know we're starting to see uh, increased occupancy in these spaces. Again, a lot of individuals are working from home and they're just looking for new different and different spaces to kind of work out of. So just kind of wanted to share a little bit of what we've been doing. This is our three-year projection. So again, launched four in January. Um, we're looking to have 10 kiosk machines placed in Q1. Um, and then in Q2, we're already working towards 20 additional locations. And we believe by the end of the year, we'll be able to land a minimum of 80 locations throughout Charlotte, North Carolina. We've identi identified some restaurant groups that have 10 or more locations and the way we're kind of going to market with them is we pilot for two months in one of their locations and then after those two months we use the data points the usage and the customer engagement and we look to scale into those additional locations and then on the corporate vertical side we're already talking to some essential worker spaces and universities that are looking to bring in an average of five kiosk machines um, in their different locations this is our competitive landscape. Um, you know, we feel like we have a huge value proposition for businesses. Many of our competitors are B2C focused. Um, one of the things that is huge for us is exclusivity that we have with our international supply chain. Um, this allows us to get our kiosk machines built at a lower cost and become profitable sooner. We have a B2B value proposition versus um, everybody else being B2C. So instead of chasing end users for smaller dollars, we, we partner with businesses and we have, you know, the opportunity for higher revenue numbers, but greater abilities to scale, but also building our user base at the same time. Um, you know, we have the uh, free rentals for users, so there's no deterrence for individuals to, you know, um, utilize our batteries. And for us, we want to become a part of people's lifestyle. That's why it's free. We want people to like go into a location and say, do you have a battery exchange so that even if I'm at 20% or 80%, I just want to make sure that I'm comfortable with my charging because battery anxiety is really a thing. And then another thing is our mobile application. It just offers the aspect of convenience and just allowing individuals to pretty much see um, where our kiosk machines are located, but also there's additional information that we're integrating within our platform as well that adds value to the customer experience. This is our team, um, you know, collectively over 50 years experience. Um, we have a pretty large team, but everybody is integral to the success of our company. Um, on the left side, we have our hardware and software team. Um, Matthew um, runs our testing and certification process. Um, Ethan um, does our product development aspect of our company. And then even thinking about some of the additional things that we want to add, whether it's solar paneling, um, extension of Wi-Fi within our services. Um, and Jason Stokes runs our website and then our application development. And then on the left side, that's our sales and operations team. Elijah comes from a deep background of sales, um, and he's the one that lands the corporate um, vertical contracts. And then Jasmine um, is our director of operations, and she's the individual that, um, you know, just kind of 
keeps us ticks, ticked and tied, has um, sets us up with different funnels and make sure that the processes that we have internally are repeatable. And then Simon is um, our communication between our international uh, partner and then me and my co-founder. Um, my co-founder comes from a deep marketing and business development background. And then I come from, as Stanfield said, manufacturing, um, technology, um, sales, business development as well. I'm going to skip the advisory and just because I think I'm short on time and just kind of, you know, share this ask that we're looking for from our community. Um, we're looking for connections to groups or companies that may own multiple locations. So I talked about the restaurant groups that may, you know, potentially own, you know, five or more restaurants or five or more bars. We're looking for those type of connections because we feel that's an important for, way for us to scale. Um, we're looking for connections to stakeholders and decision makers and essential worker spaces in universities as we look at that channel and funnel to have our kiosk machines on those spaces as well. And then we're looking to raise capital in Q2 um, and that raise is going to be in a, a growth raise. Um, I, we're figuring what product market fit looks like. And so we're going to raise some more capital to be able to cut down our supply chain, which is now two months. Um, and we want to cut it down to literally when we sign these contracts, we'll be able to launch a kiosk machine in that space on um, the next week. So I appreciate the time and our contact information is below as well. Well done, Desmond. Thanks for the presentation on Battery Exchange. We'll now open the floor to questions from Nick Mancini and Will McGuire. If any of our um, guests today would like to submit questions, please type them into the chat and we will um, try to select those as well. Yeah, so I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, kick it off. Uh, great presentation. Um, I think, you know, as a, just a quick suggestion, I think your 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 intro slide was packed with I think content in terms of what you said. Um, but if I was to only acquire that deck, I wouldn't really have any idea over kind of the originations. I can see you're traveling, and I can make the assumption that you might not have a battery in your backpack. But you you put out some really good data, honestly, and I would love to see that maybe featured in the deck. So that's just kind of a one off suggestion. Um, my initial question is more along the lines of profit and revenue. So I saw your 2021, you know, three year projection, um, but I wasn't clear at a whether that was revenue or profits and b what your, you know, your ramp up year in 2020 looked like in terms of how much money you raised versus earned versus burned. Gotcha. Um, so great points. Um, this is just a presentation deck. We do have like a sharing deck that I would mm. kind of share, but I totally get about the, um, the data points. The projection that you saw that was uh, revenue, um, we wouldn't start to be profitable until month seven of year two. Um, so everything else is just revenue projections. And then what was the last point, the last part of that question? Um, did your, what, what it looked like for 2020? So how much money you, you raised um, versus earned versus burned? Gotcha. So 2020 was a, um, a building year for us. We had to pivot. Um, so we came off of some great momentum in the event space um, 2019 and then March of 2020, the event industry literally shut down. So fortunately for us, we had raised um, about 150, sorry, 115 grand from a crowdfunding raise. And that allowed us to build out the technology and the product that you now see with the digital screens, the mobile application, the background software. Um, and so it took us, from March until um, Q4 to finish development. And then that allowed us to be ready for 2021 to, to be able to put this now into the market. So you really so you really just kind of recently launched in the past kind of quarter or so, and you're in three, I guess, let's call them beachhead or flagship locations that you're looking to move or build some momentum with, correct? Correct. correct. Right. Okay, cool. Thank you. That's great. I, I agree with Nick. It was a great pitch. And it's good to hear, Desmond, that you have more details and a slide that people can read, especially for some of those other details. I guess my biggest question, I thought it was pretty well laid out, is what is the biggest risk? I mean, you're talking about running one geographic market for 2021. Is that North Carolina? Is that Charlotte? You know, what, what's that look like? And then what's the biggest risk to not growing in more markets beyond capital? Uh, what has been kind of the decision from the team on that? Yeah, so a lot of it is the the chicken and egg type of thing. You know, we've seen models such as like the bird scooter model and, you know, different locations where 
it really makes sense for you to hyper focus on a locate on an area on a geographic area so we believe if we can focus on charlotte um and then our next market would be the rdu area um we would have enough locations to where we're allowing individuals to see it in enough location to understand there's the education aspect of it and then there's the business model of being able to pick it up from one kiosk machine and drop it off to another that if we're spread too wide people aren't going to be able to understand that so we look to build a, a pretty solid brand um in charlotte um you have a a a, a really cool dynamic to where you know there's a thriving millennial population, but there's also the, you know, um, the family environment where both mixing those worlds and just kind of having these kiosk machines in those spaces um, and exposing those individuals to understand what it is and then kind of moving on to the next market. So um, in essence, you know, it, it would be nice to like go to different markets quickly, but we want to just kind of hyper focus and say like, hey, this is what it takes on a capital sense to build a market and really understand it and have individuals kind of utilize it and then businesses attract to becoming in the ecosystem. And that's what we can do in these other markets. So we just kind of want to build here first. Thank you, appreciate that. Um, my next question is around the hardware itself. Um, I guess, you know, understanding how much, uh, you know, it costs to build an entire kiosk um, would be helpful as well as I guess the consumer mindset uh, in different regions. So I guess you're starting in North Carolina. I hail, well, I, I grew up in North Carolina, but I currently hail from the North, um, which it's kind of beaten into your skull living in New York City and Philadelphia that you don't leave the house without a power brick in your backpack because uh, bad things happen when when you do because you get lost very easily or or get caught up with with a daytime adventures that uh, you don't return from. So. Um, what are you so i guess you know what are you doing about kind of the cost factor versus you know how much revenue you make kind of in this the general market that we're seeing now as well as increasing the stigma around you don't need to go buy a battery pack you need to rent one from me gotcha um so as far as the cost and the revenue aspect um i'll just give you perspective on the largest machine it's about 1900 our cost um it is you know, and that's everything from the, the firmware, the technology, the batteries into it. Um, and then shipping over here um, is, is all factored into that. And we are pretty much, that is $34.99, sorry, $34.99 as far as like what we're leasing it for. Um, and there's- the $34.99 is what the building is paying to have the kiosk in Correct. its location? Correct. Okay. Correct. And um, just to kind of give you perspective on some additional things that we're doing to cover that cost, um, especially for small businesses, is we're now talking to um, a pretty big utility company and you know, they're energy providers and they're kind of gonna come in, kind of, they're gonna come in as strategic partners and sponsor the cost of the kiosk machine in um in exchange for branding, um, the opportunity to engage with the customer base. And so in essence, we'll have that sponsorship. And then the small business that may not be able to afford a $34.99 is just paying a $99 subscription model. Um, so we've already broken even from the strategic partner as far as like the cost. And then that recurrent revenue is pretty much all profit. But a lot of the revenue and the reason why we don't you know, become profitable until year two is we wanna get a whole bunch of uh, inventory in house. And so we're just kind of fronting that cost to be able to deploy it into the market. Um, and then, oh, sorry, you had another question. Yeah, yeah I was just going to call it like uh, on the consumer perspective as well. Like how much am I paying, um, you know, per session or per month or, you know, whatever the, I forget. I, I think it sounded like there was a hybrid subscription as well as per use model. So, um, and, you know, good point, because I got to make this a little bit clearer. We're just charging the business, but the end user doesn't get charged at all. Unless, oh, so I can just know, pick up a battery. If I'm having a drink, I'm like, oh, I'm dead. Yes. yes. Okay. And so that speaks to what you talked about, these different markets. Like, we don't want that. We, we want to take away you having to even charge your phone, at, your, your portable battery at home. Like, we want to be in enough locations to where you know that there's just this battery exchange thing that when I do run into that inconvenience, that I'm able to, you know, utilize this. Again, that's something else that I don't have to worry about. So it is going to take a bit of user behavior. But some of the things that we're looking at now 
um, in these markets. There's some studies out there, like, and maybe you are just the individual, but the studies are saying that individuals are still walking out of those spaces without charging. And then there's so much going on in life. And it's just like, again, this other thing that is so minuscule and what we're doing is just kind of adding that, um, just taking away that, that, that aspect of it and just like adding this convenience there. So. Okay. So that makes sense. So I would definitely make that very clear in your presentation. Cause you were, cause you were, it sounded like you were going the B2C route and then you emphasized your B2B focus, uh, which kind of confused me. So I didn't know if there was a double-sided model going on. So that actually very much helps. Um, and I think as a, as a kind of added suggestion that just kind of molds with your current model is you may want to start looking into how to, you know, I'm thinking of if I go to this ink and ivy place and I, I know I'm going to be able to charge my phone, then I'm just able to forget it. That becomes my favorite place. They've got drinks, fun, you know, phone charging, whatever. Um, but sometimes I'm lazy. Sometimes I don't want to go out. So maybe adding in, you know, coupons or push notifications on special deals for that, create a, create a real true partnership with that business and say, you know, basically the whole reason that you want to pay for this thing is because I'm going to drive new business and I'm going to bring recurring business back at an X factor of whatever your, your internal study may be. So it may be smart to start tracking consumer movements after you put your um, kiosk in there, because you can show businesses I'm increasing foot traffic 20% over six months after I stuck this kiosk in, then they're going to be like, boom, that's what I need during COVID is more foot traffic. So you're creating loyalty and um, a business driver as well. Do, do you want to get on the team? Literally, that's that's <laughs> our next feature set that we're currently building. Like that's what we're we're building. Yeah. Um, we've gotten into those doors, and we want to continue to. They they're now under like even a business. There's a a little behavioral change for them as well to understand what we can do. And now we're pushing them to be creative and sharing these deals and these specials and promotions so that we can put it on our platform because we do want individuals to be able to go to ours for something else outside of just the batteries alone. So um, yeah, my pitch to businesses is I'm going to drive more business. And my pitch to consumers is I'm going to charge your phone and I'm going to offer you special deals at that business that you can't get anywhere else. And at that point, the consumer wins and so does the business. So correct. yeah, we have a question from our audience today. So they want a little more clarity on the $99 fee that's supported by the energy partner and wanted to know if the partner continues to pay the monthly fee and in initial placement or you know is the i think you were saying the business assumes that the subscription fee and the energy partner is placing the machines but i guess this person wants to know you know a little more about how how many locations the energy partner may support what that looks like in terms of sponsorship got you so um yeah, just to form a little bit of clarity, the $34.99 aspect that I brought in as far as like the cost to, you know, attain the chaos machine, the strategic partner is paying for that cost. So they're just paying for it to be placed in these small business establishments that may not be able to afford that. And then the small business itself just pays the $99 um, a month, right? And just to kind of explain what that subscription actually means. So the background software to be able to offer these uh, promotions, these specials, um, to be able to uh, populate content on it, whether it's announcements or, you know, li literally there's so much things that you can kind of put on a digital screen um, mm -hmm. in order to have that. That's what they're kind of paying for. And then also the maintenance aspect. So we do handle the maintenance, but that $99 just covers it. So any type of troubleshooting or any type of replacement of batteries, if anything kind of goes down, we pretty much come in and, um, you know, fix anything that needs to be fixed. But there is also the opportunity for us to do that remotely um, on the troubleshooting side. And that $99 just covers that. Thank I you. hope that explains it a little bit better. Yeah, strategic partner is actually paying for the kiosk machine to be placed. And then the $99 is um, for the location itself. Okay, well, looks like we have time for one more question or two. Anybody has a, a final thought? Um, or go ahead, Will. Oh, go ahead, Nick. Yeah, my I get my my follow up question would just be, you know, what does what does your growth look like in terms of, you know, how long do you want to spend in Charlotte, and what are your next uh, target regions or cities? Yeah, um, I think even going to what uh, Will um kind of mentioned as far as you know utilizing all of North Carolina, so RDU and Triad, um. And it just depends on how quickly things go, to be honest. Q1, Q2 is definitely focused 
on Charlotte, I would see as early as a Q3, Q4, potentially looking at um, the RDU, especially area. The reason being is one of the locations that we're currently in, they have, that's a restaurant group and they have additional locations in the RDU area. So being able to, you know, be able to um, be, utilize that network to be placed there. And then also, um, there's a few restaurant halls that are quite similar to what we already have here in the Raleigh and Durham area that we would like to be a part of as well. So those are two markets. And then um, my co so obviously South Carolina, you know, the, the Charleston area is a, a really good environment for something like this. Um, but my co-founder is out of DC. And so that's the next market that we'll look to um, go to. Um, it just kind of makes sense in those type of markets. We're talking to Philadelphia. I think I mentioned that to you, Nick. Um, to do some uh, pilot testing there. Um, Atlanta is another region. So honestly, looking at the East Coast and some of the major uh, cities along the East Coast um, and then spread West after that. So, and then after that, the hope is to be able to go internationally. So um, I have connections to the Caribbean and then my co-founders from West Africa, and we're already working on some of those um, uh, relationships and partners, maybe another year or two from out from right now, but that's something in the future. Yeah, the African market is very hot right now. Um, my, my my two biggest suggestions would be for next steps is look at gyms as well as universities. Um, universities are filled with kids who forget to do many basic things uh, <laughs> um, uh, day to day. And as well as gyms, uh, I can't tell you how many times I walk in the gym not realizing I'm on 15% and I got to burn through a workout before uh, killing the juice. So uh, and then the other thing is kind of building off of, you know, where I come from. Um, you know, the, the North, like I said, it's very much built into your skull to make sure that you leave with a battery pack just due to the nature of, of the culture up there. So you, I think, you know, this obviously is just kind of my, my thoughts, but I think you'll have more success in the South than you will in the North um, because there isn't that, that hyper, you know, tech focus of like, I've always got to be going, going, going and keep my phone at 100%. It's a little bit more easy going culturally. Um, so that may be a, an interesting perspective that you may find as you begin to explore other cities. So I would probably, I would stick universities in the South, I think would, are going to be big magnets for you, um, in the short term. Excellent. Thank you for that. So Desmond, how should people get in touch with you if they want to know more about battery exchange? Um, you can go to, um, battery exchange.co, um, for, um, uh, we have a contact us, um, opportunity, so we'll get an, um, email if there's anything. And a lot of times there's a form. So if you're anywhere from like an investor to a potential partner to a brand ambassador, we all have those metrics there. Um, and then, you know, we're pretty active on social media. Um, so I always encourage people to, uh, follow us on there and just kind of um, like learn our journey. That's where we built a lot of our community and our support from is social media. So it's battery exchange underscore um, and then that's X and then C-H-A-N-G-E underscore. I want to thank our guests for joining us on Wild Pitch Wednesday. I'm your host, Stanfield Gray. It's been a pleasure to welcome Desmond Wigan of Battery Exchange. I'd also like to thank our panelists and our sponsor, Oracle for Startups. Oracle for Startups' mission is to help startups grow and flourish. If you're a member of Dig Nation, a startup of any size in the B2B or B2C tech space, looking for mentorship, access to global customers and migration and tech support, this is the opportune time to sign up with Oracle's startup program. Email us at info at digsouth.com and we will connect you to Oracle for Startups. And check out the comments today in the chat for a link to cloud credits and other information. To sponsor Wild Pitch Wednesday and other programs of Dig South, email info at digsouth.com for details. Until next Wild Pitch Wednesday, this is Stanfield Gray signing off. Thank you. <laughs>